Here's the third word that's very important in preparation for communication, and that's sensitivity. The emotional part, the feeling part. A sensitivity for the full range of human drama, triumph and tragedy, faith and despair, hope and doubt. The full range. Sensitive to other people's difficulties that may be beyond your own. People that are in dire circumstances that you've never gone through. You have to study your best to see if you can't understand how they might feel. Now, if it doesn't happen to you, you can't know the full extent, but here's what you can do. Try to be touched by other people's dilemma, other people's tragedy, other people's difficulties. I had to work on this. You know, I haven't had any tragedy in my life. What do I know about tragedy? I was an only child. My parents spoiled me. Millionaire at 31, broke at 33, but it wasn't a tragedy. Life has been incredible, unique to me. I don't know tragedy. Yes, I've had three marriages. But they were not tragedies. They were all very exciting. What I'm asking you to do is let your language of the future be tempered by a little deeper understanding and awareness of people that have difficulties and tragedies beyond the scope of your own life. Now, if you've been through some tragic stuff, then you already know what this is all about. But let us try our best to be in touch with. It's part of the preparation for a life of better communication. It'll help take some of the sharp, caustic edges off your language. Not be quite so devastating in language. A little softer, a little easier. Giving people a little more understanding and chance. This is good for all of us, developing this sensitivity part. What was the ancient saying? You've got to learn to walk in someone else's shoes. What it might be like. And unless you actually live it, you don't know, but at least you can try. It is good. Here's the fourth one now, and that's knowledge. In the preparation part, you just got to have the knowledge. You just got to know. You've got to gather the illustrations. You've got to put this stuff together. Do not be a lazy gatherer in preparing for a talk with a child, in preparing for a talk with a client, in preparing for a talk with a business colleague. Being ready for every eventuality. So the four steps to success. Number one, have something good to say. Here's number two. Say it well. Now that you got something, you can't mumble your way through life. If you've got a head full and a heart full of stuff ready to deliver, now the next skill is to learn how to deliver it well. Speak it well so that it'll have a home, so that it'll have an invitation, so that it'll have receptivity, so the door won't close. Heart full of experience and a head full of knowledge is not going to go very far unless you now know how to deliver it well. And you've got to deliver it to the full range from a child to a business executive. Don't be careful with your customers and careless with your children when it comes to language and communication. You say, well, it doesn't matter at home. It only matters in the marketplace. At home is where you get the practice to be skillful in the marketplace. If you want to inspire people in the marketplace, start at home. Somebody can't understand the refinement, the nuances of what's going on in your head. They can guess. Maybe from past experience, they can say, well, I think I know what he's thinking about and how he's feeling. But see, unless you try your best to express it, someone doesn't really know. And we can all do better in intercommunication with each other if we really know how each other feels about a wide variety of subjects, whether it's personal or business or social, whatever it is. So say it well. And here's my last illustration on saying it well. Don't fail to say it. Number one, for what it does. Number two, for the practice. Don't fail to say it when the opportunity arrives.